I was reading Psalm 91 the other day. Actually, it's been several months ago now, I guess. But I was reading it the other day and reminded of several months ago reading it. And uh, I read verse 11. Um, he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways, uh, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And when my grandkids were here a couple of summers ago, we have a little plaque in the entryway of our uh, of our home. And it's got that verse on it. It said, guests. And then it reads the verse. So it's for those that come in and out of our home to know that God's keeping his angels, giving his angels charge over us. And I taught that to my grandkids, to two of our grandsons, and I did it in a way that was kind of a hide-and-seek hide and kind of thing, a treasure hunt. They had to find a treasure. And I don't remember exactly how I orchestrated it, but that verse became very uh, prominent in that week they were with us. And even to this day, I say, kids, who's in charge? Angels. God shall give his angels charge. <clears throat> so God puts his angels in charge of our lives. And I was thinking about that after an incident that I experienced a couple of years ago. I was um, walking out of a coffee shop, and it was a coffee shop in a gas station. It was a very um, nice gourmet coffee shop that was part of a gas station and walking out the side door with my latte in my hand, reading a text, something I should not have been doing. It was dumb, but occasionally I do dumb things. <laughs> and uh, there was a driveway there. There was a, a the, the exit door, a little patio with a couple picnic tables and um, under, under a pergola. And then a driveway where the cars would come out of the uh, drive through after they got their drinks. And I read my text, holding my latte. I did not notice that there was a curb in front of me. And what did I do? I stepped off that curb wrong and smack landed sideways in the driveway. Could have been seriously hurt if a car had been coming. And a little while after that time, thinking about Psalm 91, I said, Lord, you said you'll give your angels charge over me to keep me in all my ways, lest I dash my foot against a stone. I said, what happened then? <clears throat> and instantly he said, you don't think angels were in charge of you? First of all, you didn't get run over by a car. Second, you did not hurt one bone. Me in my 60s, falling on concrete did not hurt one bone, didn't have a scratch, didn't have a bruise, never felt any physical repercussions of that fall. I don't think I even got latte on my outfit I was wearing that, <laughs> that day, come to think of it. And the worst thing that happened was I, I just scared the lady who was there working really, really bad because she saw this old man falling. And uh, I said, ma'am, I'm fine. You don't need to worry about me. I'm fine. But the Lord said to me, I did protect you. I did have my angels watching guard over you, even in my stupidity for walking and reading a text and not watching where I was going. He does have angels assigned to you. Angels are in charge. And, you know, we can resist those. I grew up not putting much credence in angels because it wasn't part of my religious uh, mindset. And it wasn't until I began to hear Billy Graham, who I've respected most of my life, uh, talk about angels, promote his book on angels, that I began to give attention to angels. Even though I read the Bible regularly and saw, you know, um, be careful to entertain strangers for some, uh, have entertained angels <laughs> unawares. And I knew all that. I just wasn't part of my religious framework in my mindset. And then God began to open my eyes to it. Angels are protecting you whether you realize it or not. And I hope we'll awaken to the protection of angels. I asked the Lord once, why angels, Father? I've always asked for your presence, Holy Spirit. I've always asked for you, God. You know what God said to me in my mind? Not out loud. He said in my mind very clearly. You couldn't handle all my presence. 
It's kind of like when Moses wanted to see my glory. I had to put him in a cave and cover the cave with my hand just so the backside of my presence, not my face, could pass before him. It would have killed him. And the Lord said, what I do is impart portions of myself to spirit beings that I have created and let them appear unto you for your help. <laughs> now, that's not scripture, but that's sure based on scripture. And I know the Lord gave me that answer in my, in my request to him for, why angels, Lord? Father, thank you for angels. Lord God, you're so good to set those angels round about us, to give them charge over us. Let him keep us. Thank you, Father. We welcome the presence of angels in our lives. And we rejoice in the protection that they afford us. The direction they afford us. Like the Old Testament said, you said, I'll set an angel before you and he'll lead you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord.